I'm Sam from Vector Motorsports and he, we're here with Engine Builder Magazine and we're going to come out with a video every month in regards to tuning and how it relates to engines and racing and all that stuff and every month we'll have a different topic. In this month I figured I'd start backwards. Normally I'd start with something on how you start tuning like with injectors and stuff like that but we're going to start backwards because we actually have my engine apart after a full season of racing. So we're going to dive into pulling an engine down and what you can find, learn, and figure out in regards to your tune-up. So when you go to put it back together and tune it for the next season it's all good to go so follow along with us and yeah so the first thing you typically do when you're going to take your car down is get the fluids out and obviously take a look at the oil in our last race we had some issues and when I had the oil when I was emptying it I actually grabbed this and saved it and put it in a clear bottle but this is pretty bad oil and it only has probably eight passes on it and if you look there's a ton of fuel inside the oil as well as all kinds of other stuff but when you initially look at this you'd be like okay well maybe an injector stuck or something else is going on the fueling so that was a big red flag and kind of put up an alert we were not having this problem early in the season so i know this was part of the last race and an issue then so we'll get to why this happened shortly um the other thing you typically do is check all your plugs and i'll have a whole episode about spark plugs and tuning and how to read them and stuff like that so i'm not going to go into that here pull your plugs out make sure there's nothing dangerous or crazy on it um i always take a look at all my gaskets make sure there's no leaks when you pull the heads off, and I'm going out of order on how you tear down a motor, I'm not going to actually tear it down, but I'm just going to look at the components. Take a look at the head gaskets, make sure they weren't starting to lift, there's no leaks, nothing crazy like that. I even look at the exhaust gaskets too. Sometimes you can see exhaust leaks. These were good, everything was good on that. Normally if you have a bad exhaust leak, you'll hear it or you'll see it in the data. You definitely want to make sure you fix that because that will mess up your tune a lot. One of the major issues that I had in the car, so when you pull the engine down, you want to look at the crank. And the Coyotes especially are known to have some crank issues when you're making really, really big power, especially on a blower car. So I kind of knew we were going to have an issue before I pulled it apart because the crank bolt kept coming loose. So I knew that this was going to be ugly, but basically this is a billet Bryant crank. So this is one of the big upgrades I did over the summer. And I've had issues where I snapped stock cranks, I've cracked stock cranks and all kinds of stuff. So I upgraded to this and I'm kind of bummed out that I hurt it this bad. But basically with the vibrations, I was getting the crank gear and it was welding to the crank. So you can see on the snout of the crank, all kinds of heat marks and wear marks and issues. And there's actually metal welding. So I'm gonna have to send this in and get fixed up hopefully. Gonna definitely need a new crank gear. You can even see inside the crank gear and all the marks from the wobble and the welding. And then on the balancer itself, you can see where it was starting to weld the balancer to the crank gear as well. It's a long story why we had this issue, but even so, when the crank bolts don't come loose, sometimes this is an issue. So we're currently working with a crankshaft company out of Ohio to hopefully come up with a solution. And again, I'll have a separate video on that solution and what we're going to put into our motor for 2022. Definitely, we've got a new balancer ready to go in. And we're going to try a different brand crank gear, Triangle Speed. We got it sent from us from NPR Racing Engines. So we're going to try a different crank gear and see how that goes. So when you're taking all that apart too, definitely look at the oil pump gears. Obviously oil pressure is a big deal and you don't want stuff in your oil, you don't want to lose pressure. We didn't have any pressure issues in our data and the rest of the motor I'll go through how that all looked. But when we took the oil pump apart, this pump's wrecked. Basically, I'm not reusing any bit of it. The housing included. You can see where it started to score on the side, on each side of the housing. And then the oil pump gears themselves, something went through it obviously and we think that it was metal from the crank gear because there's actually no sign of anything going through the oil and the bearings in the rest of the motor which i'll show you in a minute but you can see on the edges here where stuff went through it and took out the gears so again we're going to put a new set of gears in i got a brand new oil pump housing just redoing all of that starting from scratch all right so when you go to peel the cylinder heads off you can look at a bunch of different things obviously check the chamber check the valves sometimes based on the color of the valves you can tell stuff in the tuna. So I've checked the intake ports. Sometimes you can see difference bank to bank or um, from cylinder to cylinder and feeling, especially I've noticed in ethanol and E85 when you run that. So I always check that. 
I'm not gonna lift the head up, but I always look at the exhaust ports. See if one is richer than the other, vice versa. Even with the headers, if you have a clean set or a new set of headers, you can kind of tell what each chamber is doing on the exhaust side of it and change your tune-up based on uh, what you see there. One cylinder will want more or less fuel than the other. And when you get into really hardcore racing, where every little bit matters, that helps. So do chamber to chamber or cylinder to cylinder tuning. Um, but check all that over. Obviously, when the new season comes up, send the head out, get refreshed, all that stuff. But make sure you check every little thing because your tune can be changed based off of little differences. So All right, so when it comes to the block, obviously you want to check the cylinder bores, measure those out, and the bearings are a big thing on the main bearings. You can see both in here and on here, there's a little bit of crank flex going on, but there's nothing major going through it, nothing crazy um, regarding that. And then, you know, obviously the thrust, check that, make sure the crank's not moving, you know, forward and back. So that's set right. When you pull the rods out, obviously make sure they're straight, but check all the bearings, make sure those are good. These look brand new. like. Crazy, like so coating on them. So that's a good sign. There was nothing crazy going on with the rods. With the pistons, I always look at each rod end and make sure everything's good up here. The pin fit, very tight tolerances. If there's one that's off, you want to note that and fix that. Then obviously one of the most important parts of the engine and reading the tune is the piston. So when I brought up the oil earlier before, when there's all that fuel in it, Obviously it wasn't an injector issue, there wasn't a stuck injector, which a lot would just assume that's what it is. The piston was actually starting to rock and it was scuffing and it was scuffing on the bore and on the edge and it actually was starting to take the rings out so it, all that fuel was getting past the rings and you can see where the scuff is on the edge. Now when that happens, normally you have to figure out what was causing that. Was it in the tune-up? On the top of the piston, if it was a tune-up, you normally see like a lot of like detonation signs, stuff like that. And I only have one piston left actually, because I sent the other seven in to get it analyzed. But what we figured out is that the piston design was actually a little off. So we work with JE Pistons, and they're building us a set of custom pistons, and we're trying different stuff. Well, this design was off like a little bit, so we think there's too much rock at TDC. Um, and that's what was causing it, because it kind of went out a little earlier than it should have. The tune-up was on point. Like I said, there's no signs of detonation. You don't see any signs of detonation in the bearings, um, in the plugs, or anything like that. That's what we believe it is, and they're uh, actually going to redesign the entire piston now. And we're going to try something different for 2022, but that's part of research and development. And JE's been awesome and uh, getting us pistons quick and making a pretty badass set of pistons. So we'll get the new design in, we'll try it out, and we'll see what happens. Obviously, we pull the rings off because we're trying to figure out what's going on with that, but the rings, you check those out, take a look at them. We tried the new exhaust gas port ring. We think it did pretty good, but obviously with the piston hitting and scuffing, you can tell that the rings were starting to butt and we made sure that that wasn't the cause of the scuffing, it was actually a result of the scuffing, but that's stuff you have to look at. Also, on sometimes on the rings, you can read the tune-up in the rings, so you can see in the ring where the um, edges kind of lie, make sure it's not waffling or anything like that. All these like little things can help show the tune-up in some stuff that you may or may not be doing right or wrong. So, nothing in there that showed any sight of uh, bad tuning part on our side so we just need to get the piston design right and uh, try it again. So obviously with the cavity the timing components and the valve train are really important. So one of the major things I do even on like a refresh sometimes mid-season when you pull off the primary chains check make sure there's no binding. You want to make sure the chains are good clean not sticking didn't stretch nothing like that I replace the chains every build anyway. This one's good, all of them are good, but uh, I replace them anyway, it's just a maintenance thing and it's a wear item. Same thing with the tensioners. I check them all, kind of squeeze them, make sure they're not broke, they're good. I kind of try to see if there's a difference between the passenger and the driver, see if anything changed on that and the tension. These are both good, but again, they're cheap parts. I replace them every build just in case. 
Probably don't have to, but that's what I do. When I pull out each individual roller finger, rocker, lifter, um, whatever they call them in the coyote world, I check them, check the bearings, check if anything's tight or stuck. I replace every one of these too. Again, you don't have to because these will live long, but when you're racing and you're trying to push it to 10,000 RPM, you never know when one's going to go or if one's starting to go, so why risk it? When you pull out the cams, obviously check the cams over, um, go over those. I make sure that the bolts are in the right spot, nothing moved or tweaked or anything like that. I take the cam towers and I check those. Um, this might need to get touched up and rehomed a little bit. There's a little bit of touching going on, but nothing crazy, nothing dangerous. And then a big thing with the timing chain guides, and this is a big thing in the coyote world. So these plastic guides actually get eaten up pretty bad with ethanol. And we run C85, with, which is even worse. So you can see, and this is just three races, so three races, probably 30 passes, and that fuel's starting to eat up the guide, like it's dug in. Normally, I run the methanol resistant strips, which I had for the stationary guides, so they're fine. There's no wear on them, they're good to go. However, they've been on intergalactic backorder for the uh, pivoting guides, so I haven't had them. So it's something I'm going to have to keep an eye on because they're still on backorder. Um, should look like this, but you can see how yellow it is. This is actually what it looks like new. So you can see obviously the difference from the fueling and definitely get that replaced and keep an eye on it if you don't have the methanol wear. Alright, so in summary, what did all this tell us? Well, basically overall, the tune-up itself looks like it was pretty good. We obviously need to change up some of the parts, get the design right, put all new fresh bearings, gaskets, everything like that in there, and then definitely turn it up for next season. Definitely good to figure out what was going on. Like I said, I knew the oil looked off after that last race. And I have a sensor, um, PanVec sensor, so you can tell how much boost you're sending past the rings. And I can tell you based on the data I had, I knew something was going on and the motor was going south quick because every run that sensor was showing me more and more boost past that ring, which is obviously not good. Um, but at the, end of this, at the end of the day, we made the decision to run it, and we actually brought home the win, and we're lucky the engine held together. Like I said, with some new parts, um, a little bit different setup, and we're going to have a pretty good motor. And like I said, if we saw anything weird in the engine otherwise, most of the cylinders look balanced, most everything looks equal. So tune-up wise, timing wise, fueling wise, everything looks good. There's no major red flags. So that's a good sign. Um, next month's video, I think we're going to talk about some injector info and data on how to choose the right injector for your setup. Um, we'll get into spark plugs and maybe some idling tuning. Thanks.